We are approaching the end of our watch, so uh, approaching a watch changeover, so we might be quiet for a little bit as the four to eight watch comes in here. But thanks all for joining us for this blue water. We've got a little bit more to go, um, but this watch will be back on again uh, at the midnight to 4 a.m. watch, and we'll talk with you then. What's that? It's very so concentrated. I'm focused. <laughs> I don't know. Everything. It's all here. Team Blue Water is settling into our natural habitat, so we will get going with uh, introductions in just a bit.
High front row, high back row. Hi, hi. So we are in approximately the 16th, 15th hour of our 24-hour dive. This is our third dive of the Lu'ua'ai Hikike Kualono Kai expedition. We are exploring unnamed, well, we're in transit between uh, two areas of exploring unnamed seamount F. So that is why you see the blue water. We are just in transit from one area to the next. Good, an good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Blue Water Watch once more. Uh, it should get more interesting very soon. I'm thinking about half hour to an hour until we are at our next waypoint and headed up to the summit of this seamount. This is your watch lead, Megan Putz, from the University of Hawaii. And let's introduce us in the back row. I'm Abrian Carrington. I am the Science Communication Fellow for this watch. Coralie, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello. My name is Coralie Rodriguez. Uh, I'm a student at Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island. And everyone in the front row, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Just give us a couple minutes, back row, sorry, sort out. All right. While we wait for that, it looks like it's snowing. This marine snow we're seeing? It is. Looks like we'll have a white Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Got a question about it. Uh, can the density be measured? And what can that tell you about a given location? So we can measure how much food is getting to the seafloor using a tool called a sediment trap. It basically sits in the water column and collects sediment or marine snow uh, from a certain area. And that can tell you how, productiv how productive our surface waters are and how much food might be getting to the benthos or the seafloor. 
every area of the ocean is going to have a different concentration of marine snow and that's directly correlated to how productive your surface waters are. What exactly is marine snow made out of? So it's made out of a bunch of different things, but mainly organic matter. Um, you'll also have small plankton that might be uh, mistaken for marine snow, but generally the snow part of it is uh, dead organic matter. I think of it kind of like um, when you have a fish tank and you like shake shake the uh, the flakes in and you know they settle down to the bottom. Yeah, basically. So they're very small particles that will slowly sink. And as the dive master, Megan, uh, do you know why we are um, tackling the sea amounts in the order that we're tackling them? I think we started with C, then went like G, then F. Um, so that's just sort of a function of our mapping operations and the speed at which we can get to a dive site. Uh, so we started at sea just because it was the closest to uh, Honolulu, just so we could get diving right away. We did end up mapping a little bit, uh, and then uh, we mapped after um, that first dive, and we've mapped in between these two dives uh, so it's just which order makes sense for um, getting the most efficient use of our time. Now, the follow-up to that is, uh, is it so that um, the ship can face into the waves and give the people aboard an easier ride? I sure wish that's what happened. <laughs> that wasn't at all what happened. Yeah, we've had a little bit of a rough ride today. Um, the ship can change its heading. Uh, to face the waves a little bit more while we are on station. So you can reorient the ship to make the best ride possible for uh, the people and the ROV. What's, what's, what's good for us is usually good for the ROV as well. But some conditions just don't uh, lead to really nice riding weather, no matter which direction you're facing. This question is almost ironic due to the fact that we are cruising through pretty open water right now, but it asks if anybody has trouble sleeping during dives, knowing we might miss something cool or interesting. Uh, oh. Sleep is <laughs> super important. So Yeah, it's super important. It, it's really easy to have that fear of missing out. Um, but upside, all of our dives are recorded. We can always backtrack and, and rewatch the really, really cool parts. And we capture a highlight so, you know, we can skip the blue water, <laughs> the empty water, and go to the... Uh... Yeah, but there is something to be said about experiencing the dive live yeah. and being there for those really exciting moments. Hello, back row. Front, Front row, row in finished, the house. Finished operational chatter, and now we can do our thing that we do. Who are you? Who am I? I ask myself that every day. I'm Trevor. <laughs> Eric Seat. I'm going to jump the line. Do Aaron, it, yeah. Aaron in the nav seat. Ooh. Antonella in the Argus seat. Oh, I almost jumped in front. It was going to be two Aarons <laughs> in a row. I'm Aaron in the video seat. Double Aaron shift. So, Aaron, how do you do two jobs at once? Well, it's, re it's, pretty, it's pretty hard because the seats are opposite ends of the control van. <laughs> so, it's quite a workout. I have to run back and forth. Oh, you don't sit them both at once? No, that would be really hard. I'm not that tall. No, there's two irons. And a water bottle flying around the room. <laughs> is that Kate's? No, that's mine. Hers is staying completely. F How does that? I don't know. Maybe I need a new thing. That. I need a new thing. Science. Is that a suction? Hmm. All right. There we go. Megan, your fan club is apparently here for the duration of the shift. Yeah, I found out who that fan club is. That's my friend Matt on shore. So shout out to Matt. Thanks for joining our dive today. He says they have hors d'oeuvres and cocktails to sustain them for the next four hours. Oh, that's good to know. We have a, a little bit of time until dinner time, so I'll be thinking about those hors d'oeuvres. I don't know. Speaking of shout outs, sleep again. I wanted to shout out my friend from college, no. Jerry Watanabe, who made top 16 Miss Universe. She is Miss Universe Japan. What? Oh, wow. Awesome. Congratulations.
<laughs> oh, little red speck among the white. Oh yes, a tiny red speck. What could it be? I don't know. It could be a couple different things. It could be a jelly. It could be a tinafore. It could be a, a nemertian. It could be something I don't know. Who's that deep sea animal? So many possibilities in the water column. I know that there's probably so many things going by on the screen right now. I just, uh, I just don't have the eye training to pick them out in the same way oh, I do training. for those... Uh, Deep sea benthic animals. Pretty sure that that squat lobster was about the size of one of these specks, and you just <laughs> snatched it out of nowhere. Oh dear. That's a zoom. Wow. It looks like a screensaver. It's exactly what I was thinking. I feel like I have the same screensaver on my computer. <laughs> But you know what's better about this screensaver? This is live. That is better. You know, I was convinced that, uh, I don't know if you've ever had the maze, like way back in the day, the maze screensaver. I was convinced mm -hmm. that like I could affect it. Like, oh yeah. I'm gonna turn right, I'm gonna turn right right now. Just like with your mind, encourage it to go a certain way. I can't remember. I feel like, oh no, I thought if I like moved the mountain, no, that would have made the screen turn on. I had something, I had some theory. I don't remember what it was. Maybe you feel like leaned a certain way. Sometimes I do that while I'm watching the dives. I'm just like, oh, let's go this way. And I'll lean <laughs> into it. Like that will affect anything. I think our sonar computer was trying to do another Windows update. We should turn that off maybe. Yeah. Windows 10 really does like updating the most inopportune times. Absolutely. Like I turn on my Windows computer. It's like, update. I noticed that you didn't have internet. <laughs> Last year in the middle of the night, I updated, we were just in, no, it was this year, mobilization. We were just in port and I updated the HyPad computer like 2 a.m. Because I'm like, well, it's a good time to update. Nobody's using the internet. And I, I like broke the computer. Oh, no. <laughs> <And> then, like, <laughs> my equilibrium, like, I still think hasn't forgiven me. Like, he just like, gives me dirty looks every time he looks <laughs> Did it ever get updated, though? Huh? Did it ever get updated? No, they had to like rebuild another HyPad machine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it was like totally broken. My fault. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's just like no w good way to suspend updates to Windows 10 at sea. It just like keeps insisting on doing it. And it breaks your computer. Maybe, maybe 245 will happen. We just have to be patient. Okay, okay, I'm going to read the pun. But I hate when Windows 10 resets my default browser. It puts me on edge every time. Oh, oh. dear. Good work. <laughs> Terrible work. It, just, it so does that, too. Uh, well, back to the mission at hand. Will the Seamount F ever get an official name? What drives the naming? Uh, probably. Um, there's a whole long process of... Uh, several different committees and cultural committees that have to meet and decide on names. Um, I'm sure that certain people can um, give input as to what the name could be, uh, but it's a it's a process with several different people and committees. Yeah, too bad we can't just name it ourselves. Seriously. Call it Nautilus Seamount. Nope. There's probably already a Nautilus Seamount. I'm sure. We can't. Can't just go putting our flag on everything. We have to name it something related to the uh, surrounding culture, right? Like our dive name. Yeah. Or not it, dive, our uh, expedition name. It's good to have thoughtful names for things. Um, there are a bunch of chains of seamounts that do have uh, names back in the day when you could just start naming things. Uh, like the musician seamounts or the geologist seamounts. Oh my gosh. The geologist seamounts. Mm -hmm. That's where all the geologists want to go, right? Uh. Whoa. 
What are all the screens used for with all those different red buttons? Oh, I think you're talking about down here. Um, those are not as interesting as you'd think. Uh, they can just change our uh, our screen views right in front of us. Not going to turn the ship with any of these buttons or anything. Yeah, but sometimes you want to see different screens. So sometimes you want to see the navigation screen to get a better idea of where we are. Um, we have all these screens go to different computers. You can spy on the, uh, the ROV controls. So basically any computer on the ship can be viewed using our little red switch pad, which is pretty fun uh, and super easy to use. I love all of the switchboard capabilities on the ship. Mm -hmm. Like I want them for my own home, even though there's absolutely no use for it whatsoever. Yeah, like how, how many times are you gonna need this many computers? Oh no, but I want the little lever that's in the. Uh, oh the yeah, studio. so you could like switch from one side to the other. Yeah, it, like, that's fades in beautifully. That's pretty great. Production quality. Just get one for the TV. Just fade into one station to the other. Yeah, you can have like two things streaming at once, and then <laughs> watch both your shows. have a Nautilus dive on one side and then your Netflix show on the other. Exactly. Or for the Nautilus enthusiasts, you go back and forth between the Argus and Herc view. Oh yeah, that would be perfect. Sometimes I want to see more than one view just because, you know, you'll have the comment of, oh, check out this in the, the Argus view. There's a giant fish. And by the time you get there and get that page loaded, it's gone. This year for the holidays, for that Argus, er, for that uh, Nautilus enthusiast in your life, this fancy little slider. I don't know. I feel like that thing's like thousands of dollars. <laughs> Every time I touch it, I'm like. Oh yeah, the Black Magic Design stuff are, is really good stuff, but it, it's pricey. Mm -hmm. Yes, for those of you just tuning in, we are um, transiting from one part of a one part of the seamount to another <laughs> unexplored, uh, unnamed seamount F. Yeah, we've got a ROV question. Uh, yeah, is Argus and Hercules connected to the same line? Yep. Uh, the boat's up top, Argus comes down from the boat, it's kind of like a weight, and then Hercules comes out from Argus, so it's like a person walking a dog walking a dog. Uh, from the Megan Putts fan club, those comments get privilege. Uh, mountains <laughs> above the surface are shaped by wind, rain, and geological forces. Are sea mounts changed or shaped by the currents? Are the sea mounts shaped by the currents? That seems more like a geology question, um, but I don't think they're really that impacted by currents at all. Uh, usually at the surface, you're, you're getting more erosion, but you're not going to see that erosion uh, in the deep sea. So corally. How are seamounts formed? Yeah, so seamounts are formed. They're some of the same stuff that makes oceanic crust. So it's basaltic magma that comes up and forms them. 
Um, but yeah, so I don't think uh, the currents would have a big Im impact on the shape of the seamounts. Um, the current, uh, like Megan's side, can erode sometimes the tops and the side. Uh, however, there's also regrowth. So there's ferromanganese crust formation on top, and then there's also uh, like extra sediment. So if you see, okay, not now, but later. <laughs> When we get to more rocks, you'll see that there's sediment that forms on top of the crust as well. Do manganese crusts stabilize the, the rocks on the sides of the seamount, or do they provide any like extra stabilization or function beyond just being a crust? Uh, I don't think they do, but I don't actually know that for sure. But um, no, I think uh, the basaltic rocks are probably what's going to be the most stable. Gram manganese crusts are very brittle, so they're really easy to break off. Well, it doesn't look like it here, but once you start breaking it, it's easy to continue to break the crust okay. off. Excellent question about our control van. It is as chilly as you might think because we have to keep all of the uh, electrical equipment cool. Uh, I have the coldest spot. <laughs> it used to be the SCF because the SCF in the old control van used to be in this corner next to the video engineer. And since I'm in front of all the panels, this is where all the air conditioning is kind of focused. So it used to be the poor SCF would be bundled in the corner next to all the air conditioning. But yeah, it's because of these big giant panels and stuff. Wait, I can I can actually show. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Okay. So you've just been hiding in the shadows for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a wall right there, but the, the, the control panels keep going. Um, if you're looking on satellite feed three, that's all the machinery that needs to be kept cold or cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the video engineer spot. Next to me is Antonella and... Argus, there's Trevor and Herc, there's Aaron in the front, navigation, very end, and then back here, there is the science team. So we have Abram right there in the SCF position, there's Megan in the science position, and there's Data. You don't get a name. <laughs> I don't get a name. Data is all you need to know. <laughs> data is data's, data's the most important. <laughs> that's why we're here. It's for the data. For the data? Anyways, that's your van tour. I can uh, zoom in, too. You want to see? No. <laughs> yeah, zoom into Abraham. Here we go. Hey, look at me. Where are you? I've got cameras everywhere. In there here. you are. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hi, guys. Uh, temperature uh, gradient's nuts. It's like t-shirt and shorts weather over here. It's <laughs> great. It's, yeah, it's nice and balmy over there. Meanwhile, I'm, I've got blankets over here. Yeah, the question was, do you get to uh, Thermals. bring throws to snuggle in? I definitely have a jacket on my lap just in case. I've got fleeces. One time Antonella had to lend me her down jacket because oh. it was really cold. <laughs> I've definitely brought a blanket to the control ramp before. It's way better than the old control van, though. Oh my gosh, where are we going? Where way, are way we better. Going? That's what happens when I stop paying attention. That was a question in the chat. Where are we going? <laughs> uh, but we we covered that. So when your mapper says, "Where are we going?" Uh. Yeah, then you're like, <laughs> "Oh, where are we?" <laughs> Quickly turns existential. Ooh, we can see what other cameras we have. No, I won't do yours, don't worry. I'm not mean. You have too much power. All right, let's see who else we want to see. There's the other view. That's the, that's the ROV pilot controls. Wait, the right? science cam. There yeah. you go. I was just about to ask, isn't there like a gnarly, like, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's the camera right in front of you, too. That's science data. <laughs> Hello, world. And behind them is the studio. <laughs> yep, there's your van tour. 
I should try to do it in like the Disney cruise. <laughs> you, know, you know, the one where you, you're supposed to go around, they make really bad puns the whole time. Yes. And we excel in bad puns, so. Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Now the chat's going to be full of bad puns. You're muted. There we go. All right. I've, I've got a bad pun for you then. Do it. What did the fish say about her deceptive friend? Sea lion. <laughs> oh. Wait, that's, sorry. That's <laughs> what? <laughs> sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh, that makes it so All right, much I'll worse. say it again just for you, Coralie. What did the fish say about her deceptive friend? Uh, okay, now I get it. Sea lion. <laughs> just as bad the second time. Yeah, I told you it was bad. <laughs> you can't be an earth scientist if you don't make bad puns. <laughs> yep. That's Says a rule. geology rocks. Yeah. Although I always feel like the geology professors I had were like, kings and queens of dad jokes although if you say geology rocks like as a statement it doesn't really make like what are geology like geology rocks it's not a thing geology rocks but geology they are is rocks it, yeah and it rocks but you're not saying geology is rocks you're just saying geology rocks yeah, yeah. but that's not a pun. like as an adjective like they're trying to punify and it's just it doesn't quite work that's I feel a like B it works pun. I think Seagulls. geologists know what we're talking about. We know it's bad puns. Yeah. But yeah well, you but guys we'll make, keep saying it. You know, you geology's pretty puns. nice, you know? <laughs> How nice. So there's like a rock type, and it's called nice. It's spelled G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. Wait, let me make sure. I think you're right. The I-E is right. what I'm not sure about. Yep. G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. Orly, there's a request for you to log the data of the worst joke in the world, please. Okay. Which was that one. <laughs> that one wasn't the worst joke. Yeah. The it sea lion? Is. No? Oh, the sea lion one? Yeah. <laughs> okay, type biology. I, I, feel, I feel like Corley would be filled with bad puns, like bad rock puns. I feel like geologists just are, aren't they? <laughs> Yep, now you do some C plus pun work out there. Okay, should I log bad jokes as either biology jokes or geology jokes, or should I log them all as debris slash trash? <laughs> Probably the debris <laughs> slash trash. <laughs> That's exactly the right tag for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the debris slash trash section is for. Bad joke. What they don't tell you in school. <laughs> all right, I got another bad joke for you. Okay, go. How do you cut the ocean in half? How? With a seesaw. Oh, I like that one. Oh, no. <laughs> Mostly since you broke the rock um, saw. <laughs> Corley and Megan, I'm going to put you guys back on camera, so enjoy your spotlight for a bit. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we get famous. Yep. Well, now, though, <laughs> now, I now I have the camera on us, we're not going to say anything <laughs> like anymore. <laughs> this is not a question for us. This is a question probably for Tim. But if we could, uh, would you would we rebuild a boat with separate section of the ship for all the computers that keep th and keep that room temperature controlled? Oh, well, this one is. It's not that bad. Yeah, I was exaggerating. Fine. I just it wanted is. everyone to feel bad for me in the corner. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do have a server room, too. Yeah, so we have a room for that. There is a room, yeah, full of full of other machinery and instruments. We just haven't Marie kondo the ship, so all of our electronics aren't in the same and spot. And this is this is the this is like the new control van. It's actually really nice. So it's three shipping containers put together to make one big shipping container. Are you guys tired of having it on your face? Do you want me to switch it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like right up in my face. You guys have gotten really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. I'm like starting to sweat. <laughs> but that's how you get me to stop telling terrible jokes. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good, a good note. Yeah, could you put that camera back on their face? <laughs> <laughs> we can have a request for side cam whenever. <laughs> I like the jokes. Wow. 
We have to fill, uh, what is it, like uh, one and a half kilometers or something to the next uh, next seamount area? It is stand by. Oh, yeah, we're about a kilometer from where we're going to start thinking about coming down. So it's not too shabby. And who knows what might pass by us? How, wait, how long do we think this is going to be? Oh, if only that was an easy question. <laughs> Sorry, threw, <laughs> no, threw a hard question at you. Um, if they're at two knots, I'll check the little piece of paper that does the math for me. Two knots. Trevor's probably doing it in his head and laughing at me right now. I'm doing no such thing. Is very busy piloting the ROV. Is that what you think he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I'm going to say I think he's doing. <laughs> uh, let's see. How does, I don't know, 20 minutes sound? But I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> let's, let's say 40. That's my estimate. Double the actual. I like it. So what's our max speed while we're towing through the water like this? Do not. Do not. That seems pretty fast. Yeah, that's about the limit of me going full speed ahead all the time. Coralie, geo question. Yeah. As a geologist, what are the challenges, if any, for studying the seafloor when you can't always physically handle the rocks? Probably that. But you can sometimes. Yeah, I mean, when you you can collect them. I mean, there's a lot of ways you we were able to study the seafloor back in the day. Um, so, oh, okay, I have something I can talk about now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so before we knew, uh, when people were starting to try and figure out what the seafloor looked like back in the day, there was actually a really, or. Er, I think she's famous. She's famous to me. Her name is Mary Tharp. Yeah. She worked as a, person ever. Yeah, a cartographer uh, for these two scientists. And to be honest, I forgot their names. Um, they don't matter. They, they don't. They, they don't. Do. They, okay. So what <laughs> happened was she uh, found this like line of volcanoes in the center of the ocean. And so she went to them and told them, hey, like I found these volcanoes in the center of the ocean. And it's a pretty big deal because it was the first time we, we like realized that. And of course, these two men, instead of saying, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, thanks for showing us. They s dismissed her and said it was just quote unquote girl talk and didn't believe her. And then... <laughs> this was after this woman had drawn this massive, massive map. Yeah, she had drawn map this crazy map of the seafloor. From C4. their data. Like, she used yep. their data. And so they, like, dismissed it as girl talk. And then uh, they realized that she was true. They got an award for what she found. They didn't <laughs> acknowledge her at all. And, yeah, so now whenever, like, we're in geology classes, we try and make a point of telling people who she is because she's a really integral person in you know, marine geol like marine geology. Um, and she never got an award for it. Um, and she had to deal with some people being so rude to her. I don't even think rude is the right word. No. But yeah, rude's a little polite. Jacques Cousteau that. actually went under the water just to prove her wrong and <laughs> accidentally proved her right. So then everybody was like, oh, okay, never mind. Sorry. I just, like, don't... I, like, hate the idea that... You know, first they they gaslit her, and was like, "No, you're wrong, because you're just a woman." And uh, then the thing is that she and then they using... won an award for her work. But she was using their data, so like. When was this? This was uh, like in the fifties, maybe. Let me look it up. There's an awesome children's book in the uh, in the lounge about her. My goal, once all of the oceans are mapped to a high resolution, is to make a new version of her map. So it was hand-drawn. Let's see, she was alive 1920 to 2006. What? 
I had no idea we were alive at the same time. Um, let's see, when did all this go down, though? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it was more like in the 60s. Like, she started working on this kind of stuff in the 50s, but I think this all occurred in the 60s. Another important, not geologist, but another important woman to note, whose name is also Marie, is Marie Curie, the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, biologist. Uh, the cool painting that you would probably uh, see if you looked up Marie Tharp, uh, it was made in 1977. Uh, Madame Curie. That is not her full name. I don't even know if that's her name. But let's see. Yep, she's Polish, and I'm not going to try to pronounce her name without hearing it, so <laughs> we'll let that go, but... Another cool geology story while we're in blue water is I forgot both of these geologists names, but they were super competitive about their geology and they studied the same thing. I think they both studied some sort of, they're both paleontologists, I think. Um, someone in the chat can fact check me on that. Uh, but since they were so competitive with each other, they were always wanting to put out a paper about something before the other one. So they would, one of them would go to a site, they would collect their data and their samples, and then they would blow up the site so the other person couldn't do any geology on that site. Oh, gosh. But how stupid is that? Because then no one else can do any, <laughs> you're just blowing up all of these, like, records. Uh, so. There's a follow-up on that story. Jacques Cousteau did go look underneath the water to see uh, Steve Zissel. No, I think he was an evolved, and he probably also. There, there were probably lots of people that were trying to prove her wrong, so probably a lot of people accidentally proved her right. Sweet. Sounds good. Thanks for the update. Yeah. Oh, it's the famous ROV operator question. Do either of you uh, play video games, and does that work on your hand-eye coordination? I do not play video games. I don't either. I, I do. I play a little bit of Mario Kart, but I'm nice. not a. I'm not an ROV pilot. <laughs> I just like to throw that out there. I am. I guess oh, it's more Mario of a social Kart. activity than a, you know, a general hobby. It's more of like a. Oh. If people are playing it, maybe I'll join in. But. I'm the worst at. Actually, I'm the worst at all party-like video games. Oh, totally. So, me too. Yeah. yeah. Mario Kart, Mario Party. Actually, maybe it's just the Mario aspect. Nope, because I am awful at Super Smash Brothers too. I was going to say, I was in my mid-teens when I realized that Super Smash Bros. was not just based on random button pressing, and there was actually specific <laughs> moves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what if you did the ROV like that? Boop, boop, boop. Oh, man. Yeah, I just totally push. play video games I with you guys. I just randomly press things. Mm -hmm. I still can't do any of the special, special moves, but like I know that they exist. Oh man, I'm pretty good at that one. Mostly because right. I had an older brother and I didn't uh. like getting beat by him. <laughs> Kept getting you with the grabs. Yeah. Uh. I think I had Kirby and I'd like suck him up. I'm all like, ha ha ha. 
So, oh, how can you view? So when you type questions into the um, nautiluslive.org chat, um, there's no um, text reply. We just answer your question live. So you'll have to listen to our beautiful voices to hear the answer. Ooh, meteorites again. Has there is anyone there ever come across a meteorite on the ocean floor? Would you be able to tell one apart from other rocks? So there have been. Is mm. there like a meteorite fan club out I there? I think so. Be. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're switching back <laughs> I, to screensaver mode. Like oh my gosh. Ever. But so, these guys uh, think about them all the time. Yeah. So uh, there were three expeditions for meteorites that I know of, all, like recently. Um, two, I believe, on Nautilus, and one on the. Uh, Research vessel Falcor. Um, 25 cents. You can tell a meteorite by looking at a couple of different features. You want to talk about them, Corley? Sorry, I was not paying attention. <laughs> I was looking at something. Gracious. Else. Corley's busy doing her job, guys. It's okay. Uh, Ooh, features of meteorites. Yes. So we talked about this a little bit before. I like the term a melty. Some of the minerals will be a little bit <laughs> melty. <laughs> yes. Um, but then there's also specific minerals you look for, too. Um, another cool thing about meteorites you can do, though, is meteorites really helped us understand our own Earth's like, geology. So you can you could use meteorites to help us piece back early Earth and how our Earth was formed. They're also cool. vaguely magnetic, right? Yeah. Or strongly magnetic sometimes. So, yeah, although, you know, just because you find a piece of rock that's magnetized does not mean that it's a meteorite, so you have to look at all the features all together. Melty, melty magnets. Uh, do we Sounds ever get like a nice candy, melty magnets? Let's make it, and it's also magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> Although, no, it's a bad idea. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so cool if you ate a candy and then you could like no. stick magnets? No, it to your would stay. <laughs> that would totally destroy your intestines. Yeah, there, there's a reason why if you eat magnets, you have to go to the ER. Do well, you? At least do one. You really? Absolutely. Yeah, if you eat more than Has one. Has anyone ever eaten a magnet before? No, yeah, well, because we're all oh. can, I, I mean, can I just chime in, in this and say, please don't take life advice from the back row. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat magnets. Nor the front row. Give us some credit here. <laughs> uh, we're not the ones talking about eating magnets. <laughs> yeah, don't eat magnets, folks. Uh, <laughs> or do, and then put in the chat what happens. No, no nothing, don't nothing do good that. happens. Nothing good comes from not eating, eating things that aren't food. I mean, it's possible to pass like one magnet, yeah, but you can if eat you one eat two, magnet. don't eat two magnets. Don't eat, yeah, don't eat yeah. two magnets. <laughs> two magnets is actually extremely dangerous. One magnet's totally fine. Oh, I wouldn't say totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Do not take life advice from Nautilus Live <laughs> on this specific watch. I can't speak for other watches. Yeah, don't take medical advice. Uh, other watches from might us. be slightly we, we more are not, not a that doctor. kind of doctor. <laughs> Um, I'm not any kind of doctor. That makes yeah, that makes me off the hook. Right? Yeah, we're, I guess we're none of none of us are doctors. So yeah, okay. Are you a doctor, Meg? No, I'm not. Oh, whoops. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have to sit in the control van. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's mad because he thought doctors made a lot of money, and now oh. that he's a rock doctor. He's like, damn, where's my money? <laughs> I'm surprised Adam hasn't marched up here and set the swatch straight. <laughs> I'm waiting um, for it any he's, moment. He's actually in the middle of a thing in the studio. Yeah, Eating yeah. magnets? Or what's he doing? <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, that's why we're getting away with this, because the two bosses are Busy in the eating middle magnets. of a call. <laughs> uh, huh. Let's see. Oh, do, you, do we ever get startled when a, large animal, a larger animal swims by the ROV? Uh, we haven't had one in a long time. <laughs> Back in the glory days. I mean, it could happen right now. Yeah. Join the squid. Let's do it. Let's manifest it. Let's see how startled we are. <laughs> but I don't know. If we're anticipating it, we'll right, we be startled. startled by the squid we're expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just... When, when there's jump scares in movies, I jump every time, even though I know it's coming. So, you know, I probably get startled. 
Um, oh, a more serious question. Oh, that wasn't a serious, well, a, a question that we're going to take very seriously. Um, have we noted any major changes in the deep ocean with uh, ongoing climate change? Um, well, we've just begun exploring the deep sea and um, understanding how climate change really impacts our planet. But yes, there will be impact to the deep sea due to climate change. Uh, climate change will impact surface waters and surface productivity, and that will directly impact how much food is getting to the deep sea. So if you have a plankton bloom, that will allow for more food production in the surface, and that food will get to the deep ocean, which could feed animals. And in the reverse, if there isn't as much food productivity in the shallow waters on the surface, you're just not going to get much food down there in the deep sea. Um, long term, uh, climate change might shut down some of that deep water formation that happens in the North Atlantic and in the Antarctic. And if that happens, um, deep ocean circulation could be changed. And that would directly impact the animals that are living in those deep waters. Nice. So, uh, I'm going to burst someone's bubble here. Uh, the control room camera always seems extremely still compared to the rough sea exterior shots. Does the control room have a particular technology to dampen movement? Boy, don't I wish. Um, you just <laughs> happen to be catching us when we're not like gripping the desks and everything's like sliding down. Uh, we do have grippy mats on the desk so that like the keyboards won't slide and the, everything is bolted down. But like if we have like notepads or something, or we are kind of like leaning over, uh, it's not still at all. Definitely not still when I was trying to take a nap earlier. Mm. Do you slide head first or? I, was feel I felt like I was sliding feet first most of the time. <laughs> but in that like head to toe motion. Yeah, head to toe orientation. <sighs> slowly making my way to the edge of the bed. hate that. Yeah, by the time I got to the edge, I thought it was time to get up. <laughs> when, when we did the crossing in the 50-foot sailboat down south, we had to tie ourselves into our bed at night. No way. Because of how, how bad it tacked back and forth. I was how do you fall asleep boat. if you're strapped down, though? That's, all I, I, that's what I took from your, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a very small boat. It's a very small boat. And very big seas. Yeah. I'm terrified just thinking about it. Yeah. Well, isn't no, that like, uncomfortable? Well, you're super tired, right? Eventually, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you, you get kind of, you get used to it. Eventually, you need to sleep. It's like a seven-day crossing. So, but you'd like, my, I was on the top bunk, so you actually have to, like, pull the strings up. So I was actually kind of making myself in a bit of a V shape, and then I'd tie it in. <laughs> but some people just have the boards to keep you in. The, the lower bunks just put boards up. So you just smack against the boards. That's yep. not better. <laughs> yeah, you put pillows up. I'm doing a lot of hand motions that no one can see, but... Yeah, you, you taco yourself in, like yeah. hard taco. Yeah. So we could, you could tie yourself on the bed. That was my point. If you guys are afraid of falling out. Um, ROV question. Would piloting an ROV be kind of like running an excavator or a backhoe as far as like, you know, I mean, actually moving the thing, sure, I guess there's components of that. But the the part about ROV piloting that's not, like, you can sit in and drive the thing around, but the hard part is knowing what you're looking at. The spatial awareness, the that's why there's multiple people to do it. That's why NAV sets a dedicated watch, is because there's so many sensors and maps and inputs and blah, 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 that it's hard to keep it all straight. So you don't really need a dedicated, dedicated navigator for an excavator, but you definitely do for ROV. You were talking about how disorienting it was when you were doing the um, the live 3D situation. Sorry, what was that? I said you, earlier you were talking about how disorienting it was to have the the live uh, 3D situation. Oh yeah, I wasn't I wasn't part of that. I just heard oh, that okay. secondhand, but. Love in the chat for. Uh, us being the most fun to watch team. Good job, everybody. Megan, this person said, I never considered the seas to be empty. Where are all the fish? Oh, they're there. They're there. I um, like to imagine that they're just in like the dark areas around the ROV light. 
Yeah, the ocean is definitely not empty. There is a lot of stuff. Um, and there are a lot of fish out there. They're just avoiding the ROV. So if we were to turn on what is essentially our fish finder, uh, you'd be able to see that, that deep scattering layer actively avoiding our wire and moving around the ROV. That's where uh, a majority of the biomass is located, is in the scattering layer. Speaking of biomass, has anyone here seen a giant squid during a dive? I haven't. Um, live, no, but uh, there has been a sighting of a giant squid on camera with an ROV. But, uh, and I saw the recap on YouTube. <laughs> Go Does to YouTube, count? we'll all have seen, we'll all have seen a giant squid. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't there. Um, it would be really cool if we saw one though. I mean, any squid, I'm down for any squid. I love squid. I think they're really cool. I or an like octopus. Megan, this is a good time to bring up the point that you told me I'd have a lot of animals to film during this transit. Oh, yeah. Um, they're all very small, um, <laughs> so keep your eyes peeled and, and zoom in on specs. Have you tried can, peeling your eyes? Yeah, peeling your eyes like a banana. I think I was promised jellyfish. There are jellyfish. I've been seeing some. Um, they just go by really fast. I'll are try to point them out with my t uh, teleprompter. Or tele Thank you. Thingy. Do you want to put it uh, on counter? <laughs> See how many jellies you can fish on the teleprompter. Oh, yeah. It's my, <laughs> my new video game with ultimate stakes. Speaking like. of video games, check out that segue. Do the ROV controls provide any tactile feedback? Or is it like using radio control vehicles where you can only just uh, verify visually? Yeah, it's, just, it's the latter. There's no force feedback. The only feedback is this 